So we're going to start in uh, Premiere Pro, kind of layering some things. I'll show you how to drop in your rendered videos of your three second, two second videos as well, things that you can use. Again, this is kind of what we're looking for. It's not perfect. I need to make these clips probably a little bit shorter to be able to animate them uh, or sort of get them to line up with the music is about what I mean. Let me go ahead and save this project just in case. Just start on my desktop. Or dance. And I'll go ahead and close this one. So if you're starting out fresh within Premiere Pro, you can hit a new project. Um, I usually just leave these all the same as is because it'll match it to whatever sequence you drop into your project panel. Um, if you don't see if it looks like this, you can also hit these tabs at the top or go to window and workspace and choose a different workspace that you want to work in to try and rearrange your panels in a way that sort of makes sense for your working. Um, I find, you know, video editing, this kind of effects panel works pretty well for me because I have options of effects things and the effect control panel has a lot of different things that you can edit on each clip if you want to, including layer styles and all kinds of things like that. And then to import stuff, you just can either drag and drop stuff into your project section, wherever your project panel is, um, or you can just go to file and import to start throwing clips in. So I'll do that that way so that you can see what that looks like. Um, I know this was one of them, this sort of like hawk in the rain here. So I'll just go ahead and drop that in and import that clip. That was one of the clips that I wanted to start working in. And I'll just drag that and drop it into my video section to be able to start editing it. Now, just like After Effects, if you hit the tilde button, you can zoom in on any of these panels. So I can actually watch my video if I want to, and then just pay attention to my layers if I want to. One of the things that I think is really, really helpful when you're putting together things with Premiere is to sort of make these spaces just a little bit larger so that you have more to space to work with. I mean, sometimes you can actually see that there's a little bit different variety of content within this space as well. So like when I drop in my music file, which is what I'm going to do next, go ahead and find where I put that over here. That's the wrong one. Let me find my downloads folder. All right, I'll go to downloads. Do I have too many folders open? Maybe. There it is. We'll just drag and drop that in. I can then drag this onto the audio section. And I maybe, maybe we'll find a little bit more interesting section of the music to kind of jump into. This intro section is a little bit slower paced. So let's just kind of drag that out and then I'll click and drag it from the corner here. And we'll just start it off with that first initial beat, which will be fun. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna make this bird dance a little bit, which is endlessly hilarious. And um, yeah, then we'll layer some clips onto it. So um, basically I wanna work with this clip. As you can tell, there's plenty of options of things that you wanna change potentially into the effect control panel on each, each of these clips. Um, and every clip has these options. So like the pen tool, these are all for masking. Um, you can change the opacity if you want to, you can change blending modes and all kinds of things, which I think are great give you a lot of opportunity to sort of layer things up in a different way. And you can also, if you can see here, you get a little bit of a timeline. And I'm sorry, I got to move my Zoom panel here. Um, but you can actually edit different things within your, your space here to actually add up keyframes on the clip by not adding keyframes within this space. So this space of your layering system is actually to edit all of your clips together. And let me show you what I mean. So let's say if I've got this first part and I just want this kind of like nod of this bird to line up with a few beats and I can like kind of replay that. I'm gonna find where he starts to nod his head, which is maybe right here before he starts to turn. So I'll go back one frame right there. And I'm gonna hit my C button, which is my razor tool. I'll cut, right? I'm gonna make a cut of my clip. I've got that clip selected already. I already got it selected with my selection tool. Hit C on my keyboard and go ahead and just click once. And it lines up with my timeline. It's going to make that cutting very, very easy. Let me move my zoom panel again. I'll zoom in a little bit, which this is the zoom tool, by the way. It works a little funky, but you'll get used to it. Just click and drag. You can click and drag and move yourself around the project in the middle, or you click and drag these endpoints to zoom in and out. And it's just as long as it needs to be. So however much space you add into this, it'll just be that long for your clip. So you don't have to worry about duration and things, which is a little bit different than After Effects. So this is about where I wanted him to nod. And here's the end of his nod, maybe, like right about there. And if I just go back and forth to this clip, we'll kind of do this like nod to the beat thing, which would be kind of fun. 
So I'm going to jump into this clip again and cut it right here. And so there you can see I'm just making multiple clips. And if I just zoom in on this with my tilde button, I can actually just kind of see how these clips are lined up. When you expand this, you get a little more visual representation of what those clips look like. So if it's not the same bird repeated over and over, which is perfectly fine to line up lots of clips together, right? We can do some more hard cuts into different scenes and things, which would be pretty fun. So if I want to have different birds kind of dancing, that might be kind of a fun theme. So um, this is a clip that I want to reuse. So I'm actually going to drag this over to move it out of the way because I'll come back and use some more of this footage later if I want to. I want this clip to be able to go back and forth. And but what by that, what I mean is if I watch this clip over here, I want it to kind of kind of do that, you know, but to the music. So to do that, I'm actually going to make a copy of this clip and I'll just drag it over here. And then let me drag it so it lines up and lines up right with my clip. So you can tell there's no like space where there isn't video on all of these clips as I'm going back and forth. But one of these I need to reverse or time reverse. But before I do that, let me just show you how this works over here in this space. If you need to set up any keyframes, including keyframes for masks or blending modes or opacity, anything like that, scale, position, you can set those all up here in this space. And as you can tell, the existence of this particular clip goes from this timestamp. It's like less than you know five seconds or three seconds or two seconds or something. And then it's going to advance that number of frames. And it always goes from the beginning of wherever the clip is to the end of wherever that clip is. So this section here is your space for adding keyframes, if you need to keyframe anything. And then this is where you compose all of your clips together. So you can see that as my timeline goes past that distance, it sort of just ends at the end there. And then I can move it back into this clip, which then moves my timeline on this space as well. Certainly let me know if there's questions about the sort of difference between these two timelines and how you might use them differently. But let's go ahead and time reverse this one. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go to speed and duration. And I'm just going to hit this reverse clip speed button. So that's going to play the clip in reverse. Now this is easy to do because I'm not reversing sound. There's no sound associated with this clip. And even if you do have clips that have sound and video, they will come in as separate pieces. You can always extract just the video by deleting the audio clip that you don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on this, and that will reverse this clip. So now it's just a seamless transition. It just pauses for one frame, and then he'll go back and do his nod the other direction. Now, I don't need to continue to like reverse, reverse, reverse to make copies of these things. I can just copy them. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and just sort of drag this. And I'll hold down the Option key or Alt key to be able to make a copy and then just line that up. So now he's going to do this kind of like head bob thing. And I can continue this for maybe a couple meters of my music. Just move this clip out of the way here. I maybe could move this into video clip three so it's out of my space. You make multiple copies of this. Whoops, I need to just copy those two so they all line up. And then I'll drag these over there. So now he's going to kind of just head bob to the music. Let's see if it lines up or if I need to change any of the timing. All right, cool. Not too bad. Um, I do want to make sure it ends up on the next frame of the piece so that it continues the motion, right? I don't want it to seem like there's hard cuts in here. I want it to seem like the bird is sort of naturally jamming out to these tunes. So to be able to do that, I want to make sure that the next frame in my sequence of these, the actual main sequence of frames here, lines up very, very well. And let me zoom. So we can see it. So I can double check that that lines up with the frame too, and it looks like it's good. There's no like hard cuts between those, or there is. Yeah, there is a hard cut there. There we go. Let's find that section here. There we go. So I can continue on with this motion and just let him kind of do his thing for a second before I have him do his next series of head bobs. But let's add a little more fun to this. I can actually throw in some of my one second, two second, three second challenges that we had before. So let me find those clips as well. I think this one was kind of a fun one. Here's this one. That one could be kind of fun too. Let's throw that in there. What's this meandering line thing? Why not? Spacious. 
It doesn't type in the two, why not? Okay, so um, I want to drop in, just drag and drop a bunch of clips from, these are all MP4s that have already been rendered out of After Effects. Um, they do have their background still, uh, which means I'm going to have to kind of change some of the blending modes to get them to blend in. But let's say I wanted to kind of include some of these, and I think the three circles was a pretty good fun one that I can include. And then maybe we'll just include that on the top of our footage here. So um, there's kind of an issue here. You know, I've added that footage, it's, it's rendered, it's animated, it's kind of scaling to fit in the space, but it's got that black background. So we want to do something to be able to make this blend a little bit better. Um, two ways we could do that. We can go back to After Effects and render it in a different way, which I do want to show you how to do so that you can render fully transparent. It's RGB plus alpha when you choose your, choose your, out, your rendering um, settings. But I can also just select that clip, go down here into my effect controls, scroll down a little bit until I find the blending mode, and then just change the blending mode. I do not remember which one is the right one. One of these will make it look, there we go, screen, screen works. So it gets rid of that like black background. And that's kind of fun. Maybe let's, let's move this clip around a little bit, just my move tool and I can drag that a little bit. Let's scale it up maybe, scale it. Here's the position. So maybe let's put it over here. So it's highlighting the bird's head maybe. And let's scale it up. Let's try that again. Okay, kind of fun. Um, yeah, that's kind of the basis of layering these things up. And I can go in and sort of add some of these more varietyed secondary motions, right? I didn't know how I was going to use the secondary motion. It's nondescript, it's not specific, it doesn't have any other like useful purposes necessarily. I can also speed this up if I needed these circles to spin faster. So I can right click here. Looks like this one came with some audio, which it didn't need to be rendered with audio. And I could mute that so that it's not included. There's not any audio in there anyway. You could also just delete it. Um, okay, so let me right click this if I wanted to speed this up. You can also again go to speed duration. Now this percentage thing works a little bit differently. I'm sorry, here, let me move it so it's on your Zoom screen right. If I go ahead and set the speed up to like 200%, it's going to be twice as fast. Does that make sense? So 200% increase in speed is going to be double time. So it's going to make the clip shorter. And let me just show you what that what I mean by that. It was about three seconds or a little bit longer than three seconds, and now it is much shorter. It'll speed that clip up so that it plays it faster, which is kind of fun. So I kind of like that a little bit better. I had no idea I was going to need you know, a one second clip versus a three second clip when I was making that in After Effects, but pretty easy to edit those things here in Premiere Pro. And again, let me show you what that looks like if I go to speed duration and it's still set to 200. So you can know I could easily set it back to 100. And I'd want to make sure that there's space for that clip to go past that. You wouldn't want to make sure that there's any other clips here in the way. Remember, you can always have as much space as you need. My zoom controls here. Um, so if I need to, I can always just like move clips all the way over here until I'm actually working in that space. And that's something I do quite a lot with the, within Premiere Pro. I'm just kind of like editing things until I want it to line up as it goes down the line within time until I need to, you know, move these things again. You can also like line them up if I right click in this empty space and I can choose ripple delete if I want to. And that'll just slide that clip all the way over to the other side. Now let's go back to our time adjustment here. There's another way that we can adjust the time in this clip. So I'm going to right click here, choose speed and duration. Um, the other way to sort of slow this down if I wanted it to be slower in the same way that this works on footage also. So like this is an animated clip that I did in After Effects, but it also works on these footage clips. If I want them to be slower, if I want them to take more time, if I want this layer to be longer here, you can do less than 100. So double the time would be 50. So now it's a three second animation that then became six seconds. So that'll make it slower in that sense. So it makes it a longer clip. Now I lost my kind of video and un underneath that because I don't have any footage underneath that section of the video. So it just reverted back to its standard black background. Right. One other way that you can edit these things is if you need them to line up a little bit more organically to music and you're not really sure what the right number is to put into that, that's when you want to use your R tool. So the R tool is actually hidden underneath this ripple edit tool. It's called the rate stretch tool. So the hotkey for it is R and you can find it under there. 
by clicking and holding down the button on this tool or just hit the R button on your keyboard to be able to select that tool, the rate stretch tool. Essentially what you do is you can select a clip and you can make it shorter or longer and you're changing the full duration. It's still the full duration of the clip that you have it set to, but you're just speeding it up or slowing it down much more organically rather than having to right click and choose the depth or the distance, the percentage that you want to be able to include that in. So now I've been, I've done that. I don't really know what the rate is. I could check it by going to that speed duration setting again. So there it was like 330.43%. Like I would have never found that number, but if that was the time that I actually wanted it to line up to in my clip to be able to show that this is kind of this clip that I wanted it to have, that's a pretty fun, sort of a fun way to be able to edit these things. And there we go. There's my clip without the sound. So I'll delete these two that are linked with the sound because I don't need the sound on that clip. That's just extra stuff taking up space. And I could have another one of these maybe. Maybe I'll change the scale a little bit to add a little variety. Maybe I'll change the position. So it looks like it jump moves a little bit. I could even change the scale position of some of my other like actual footage clips, which might be kind of fun too. Yeah, cool. And of course there's effect panels for a lot of the stuff too. You can explore all these like video effects, which are pretty fun. There was an auto save that just popped up there. Distort, key, noise and grain, perspective, stylization, time, transform, transition, utility. If you can't see that, it's on the side where that zoom panels are usually on that side of the screen. Um, it's just in the effects panel and you can find video effects and then just find what you want. There's blur and sharpening, adjust, color correction. You can also add these on to adjustment layers if you make a new adjustment layer, which is pretty fun. So let me just see how this queues up for my music. Oh, kind of fun. Let's jam it out. All right, let me go ahead and pause there, see how you guys are doing. Okay, cool. So I've got my clip here. This was kind of the clip that I've got these, these circles on here, and I can make multiple copies of these. I could layer up multiple copies of these, by the way, which would be also kind of fun so that I can have like multiple versions on top. Maybe this one will scale down and move over a little bit. You know what I mean? Like you can have some fun with this. And I know like having fun and saying that in a class and you're kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to do the absolute minimum that I need to, to be able to get the point, which is fine. I'll get you points. I don't care. But the point is, is to try and push yourself a little bit. You know what I mean? So like have some fun with it. See what you can come up with. If you need to go back to After Effects and add in, you know, throw in another one second animation. Um, again, you can get points for that for the one second, two second, three second challenge anyway. But I mean, have some fun with this. Um, I think you'll be a good time. And then furthermore, um, you can also fade these things in and out, which is kind of fun too. So if I want to add in some opacity key, if you guys can see this, anything that has these stopwatches, just like you're used to seeing in After Effects, because you're so familiar with that program at this point, you can see that this is going to be something that I can animate with. So if I go ahead and hit that keyframe, you can see the keyframes here in this section. Again, this is in my effect controls panel. If I know that I want this to sort of like fade in, this is just like a second copy of my spinning circles clip. Uh, so I wanted to maybe start at 0%, right? So you don't see it right away. And then maybe, I don't know, four frames later, I want it to sort of like slowly fade in, right? So now you're going to start seeing it sort of fade in. And you can see that I think it's over here. There's a little circle over there. It's kind of just fading. Now I can go to the end of this and sort of fade it out again. So you can easily add these fades in and fades out of things. I can just copy paste the same keyframe if I want to, or go ahead and add a new one by going to the end of the clip and then just changing this down to zero again. So multiple ways that you're used to keying things. It's very, very similar to how you key stuff in After Effects. You just do it in this panel, not on the clip, not in your layers panel. Cool. So there you can add some keyframe things. You can key all kinds of stuff. Here's time remapping again down here, which is fun. So you can add up keyframes for time mapping as well. If you want things to speed up or slow down within a certain frame. So if I want things to sort of like suddenly slow down and let's do this on a, let's do this on a clip over here because this will make more sense if it's a footage clip. So if you wanna do like a slow-mo effect that slows down slowly, if that makes sense, you can add in keyframes here. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna be 100% at this point, maybe two frames later, I want it to be at a much slower rate. You can change hey that velocity. Yeah, question? It's almost noon. Ah, yes, thank you very much. All right, let me show you the other thing real fast. Okay, After Effects, if you wanna render this stuff to be able to render without a background, I recommend rendering in After Effects. So if you go to File and Export, choose 
add to render queue rather than add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. This is just if you want a transparent background. You can choose this feature down here, and let me make this a little bit larger so you guys can see it. If you go to the output module and then click on lossless, you should be able to choose right here channels, RGB and RGB and alpha. So both of those together. The alpha channel is how it keeps track of what is an object and what is background. Naturally, when you just choose RGB, it's just going to make that background solid black. But if you choose RGB and alpha, it will render it as an actual like uh, transparent background. You can click OK. Here where I want to go to output two, let's choose where I want it to save. And here's fine. This will be the group.movie. Um, the really only option with this is quicktime.movie, which is fine. And I'll go ahead and hit render over here. Should render with a transparent background, in which case when I drop that into Premiere, which let me see if I can find that one that I just rendered. Was it the group? Something like that. I can drop it into here. And then drop that in as a clip. So now it has no background. You can see that there. It's got just the solid gray. It's right there. If you can't see it, let me scale it up and move it. Kind of hard to see. It's actually blended a little bit better with the blending mode. Maybe I need to change the colors of that clip a little bit. Okay. All right, let me pause real quick there. Um, okay, so a couple of things that I think will help with this process is that um, there's a couple different kinds of styles that you can set up with these things. So, so far, I've been very, very careful to make sure that my footage doesn't seem choppy. There's no like hard cuts. Um, it's all just sort of this bird footage that I've reversed or time reversed. And I've done a couple things with these clips here. I've got his head bob kind of coming up. I'm trying to cue it up to the music. And as you can tell, if I increase the size of my waveform, in my audio section, you can see where those beat drops are, right? So like those little claps that you hear in the background, you can see where they're at. And if it's helpful, it may be actually nice to be able to cue those up to particular kinds of movement, in which case I know that if this is kind of this little head bob he's got going on, if I can make the next clip where he swings his head a little bit differently, line up with this beginning of this clap, this kind of like clap sound, that's gonna be a really nice cue for the music and the footage together. So in which case, I need to make this clip a little bit shorter, but although be the same movement, right? So I just need to time it differently, in which case I'm going to use this rate stretch tool or R on your keyboard. So if I hit R on my keyboard, I can select this tool and kind of just shrink it down until it lines up with the beginning of this. It's still the same length of that clip. It's still that head bob, so it should line up. I'll go ahead and switch to my move selection tool, which is V. Click and drag and move this clip over. So then he does his next movement, which is that during that kind of swing of that. And actually, maybe this needs to be a little bit trimmed slightly, in which case I can use my move tool and just drag this over to shorten it. And I'll make this one a little bit longer still. And then switch to my R tool again and shrink that up. Oops, it needs to be this one. And I'm not using the hotkeys this time, so you guys can see me doing it. Um, the R tool is here, the V tool is here. Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So to move clips and to lengthen the clip to be able to show more of the original clip. Um, and that is something that is, is true of Premiere Pro and not true of After Effects, that when you shorten clips or footage, they still exist. Like the whole clip still exists in that space. I've just shortened the amount that you can see. So it's a little bit like if I extend this, it's still the more, you know, additions of the same clip. And all of it is still just this, a wet hawk footage, essentially. So I'm gonna line this up a little bit here. I'm just gonna listen to that for a second. I've gotten really good at hearing through it through that scrub thing, but I'll go ahead and hit play. Yeah, so that looks like it lined up a little bit better. So again, I'm just kind of having fun with this line in these clips up. Sorry, I lost my place there for a second. Let me zoom in a little bit closer. All right, so if that's the extent of this next clap, then reverse of this, the next sort of section of this needs to go the other direction. So I'm gonna make him reset his head, which is the next clip. This one's I've already time reversed. And just to remind you how to do that, you can right click on these clips, go down to speed and duration, and then click this reverse key button and click okay to be able to reverse these. So again, I'm trying to make this look like there's no hard cuts. And I'll show you what I mean by a hard cut here in a moment. But that lines up to the music. I want to make his head reset before the next clap, which is right here, according to my waveform. 
So I need to shorten this one as well, which is going to be my rate stretch tool. Click and drag this backwards. Whoops, I need to select the right clip first. There we go, right select tool. We can drag, line it up with where I want it to actually be. There. So now he's gonna reset his head. And I believe I already have one that's going the right direction. So that on the next clip, he'll kind of bring his head down again. So he's kind of jamming. Oops, no, this is a different one. All right, let me grab this one. And I'll just put it up here so I don't accidentally overlap anything. There we go. Swinging his head down at the same time of that clap. And let's see if I can hear this a little bit. Now, maybe needs to be extended slightly so that it comes down a little bit later. There we go. There we go. That looked pretty good. Now, this is a particular different style of these next couple of clips that I got here to show you. And if you can tell, they're the same clip layered up together. I mean, this is perfectly fine for the style that's what you want. But you see the transitions here, where the one, it's just kind of like this head bob, like kind of thing. But there's no reverse in between, right? So far, I've been very careful to make sure that I have a reverse clip going the other direction to be able to show these. But this is kind of a little bit of a fun little pop there. Now, that's perfectly fine for footage, not an issue. And if you can tell, I have these kind of like crazy circles that are spinning on top of that footage, which is fine. But if you don't want to use that style, I may try to add some transitions in between of these. And to try that, this works better with the longer clips, by the way, these particular little, these little pieces here that got cut up a little bit differently, I might delete those. And I just might extend these clips a little bit longer so that they're not as like, there's, it helps with these transitions that you use if there's more space between the clips to be able to add the dissolves. So under here, under my effects, settings here. There's a whole section for video transitions, and you can choose what kind of video transition you want to use. This is a common place to go through if you're like editing, you know, a commercial or, um, you know, some other kind of video advertisement. You may find that there's lots of clips that you need to include together. And for some reason, when you're watching lots of like harsh clips back to back, it kind of can hurt your eyes a little bit. So it's nice to use some of these more kind of softer transitions. And to do that, you can select the clips that you want to add these to and then drag and drop this kind of cross fade on top. So this is going to be a cross dissolve. And you can see what that does. You see how it kind of adds this almost like overlapping overlay within the clip? Let me zoom in here. You guys can see that. Do you see what it's doing there? I've got two clips here. They don't match up. It happens to be the same bird. So it's kind of a weird system. But do you see how it cross fades those two? And that's the crossfade. Now I can sometimes make this shorter if I don't want the crossfade to happen so long, but it does restrict it a little bit on how quickly or slowly you can get it to crossfade. And where that crossfade happens, again, is where you line it up on top of these two clips. And again, to add that, let me go ahead and see if I can delete this crossfade here. Selected both the clips that I wanted to add it to. I went on to what kind of fade that I wanted. In this case, it was underneath the video transitions and dissolve folder. I went to crossfade, which is going to like make them both semi-transparent as they fade into each other, and then just drag and drop them on top. Now, again, it's a little bit restrictive in this sense because it has to be a certain size. And here under my effect controls, you can see what the settings are here for my crossfade effects. I can click on this box and sometimes shrink it a little bit if I want to, or click and drag and choose where it lines up across my clips. So that's kind of a nice way to sort of add some transitions if you wanted to add some different clips. And in this case, it kind of makes it a little bit of like a trippy dance move, I don't know. But I'm not sure that that's quite the style that I wanted to go for for this. But this is really useful if you're going from something completely different, right? So if I were just gonna to transition to another bird dancing, which I may do that here in a minute, um, this would be a good way to kind of transition between those two. Of course, you can do this yourself as well. So you don't have to rely on these kind of standardized tradition or transitions. It does save you a lot of time. So the other way to do this is to sort of overlap these so that their time is like simultaneously overlapping, in which case then I can go in and add my own crossfade using the opacity. So if I know at the beginning of this, this clip, I want it to be at zero. And then when it lines up with the end of this clip, I want it to be a hundred. So right about there, I can add in my own keyframes again in this effect control section. And then this one, I also want to fade out at the same time. Now, I do need to be a little bit careful when I do this because I don't want it to show the you know, black background because um, that may be a little bit distracting when you're fading between those two. So it's going to go from 100. I might just have to line this up a little bit closer to the end so that they're not as, 
there's not as much time in between where it kind of like fades. But there's my own fade transition where I've had that happen a little bit quicker. Good question about transitions. All right, let me pause recording.